this Kc has uh, uh, L of Kc, so sections of Kc is G, right? And the degree of Kc is 2G minus 2, right? And so this number here is greater than, strictly greater than, 1 minus G plus uh, 2G minus 2. Degree of Kc. Right? So this, this guy is a case where equality definitely doesn't hold in there. So the, the, the inequality over there holds as a strict inequality. Right? So on the other hand, if I go up to Kc plus P, then that has degree uh, 2g minus 1, so uh, equality holds. Yeah, and so so what? Are, where are we? I've gone up. Uh, I've gone up. I have the L of K C is G, and L of K C plus P is uh, one minus G plus two G minus one. Right, and uh, that's also G. So therefore, L of K K C goes up to L of K C plus P. Right, this is equality. Yes? Okay, so now I'm going to now I'm going to prove the whole the whole form of Ring Rock, the whole statement. I'm not really leaving myself a lot of time for the to prove A, B, and C, but uh, uh, that's the way things happen. So, uh, so proof of uh, Riemann Rock. So the Riemann Rock statement says, as I think I said before, L of D is one minus G plus degree D plus L of K C minus P minus D. Yeah. So, if a degree d is less than zero, right, then certainly L of d is equal to zero. I've already, I've already used this, right? And Kc minus d has degree strictly greater than 2g minus 1, greater than or equal to 2g minus 1. Right? And so L of Kc minus D is uh, 1 minus G plus degree of Kc minus D is 2D minus 2 minus degree D. Yeah? And uh, so I'm getting 0 equals 1 minus G plus degree D plus this L of Kc minus D. Right? So in this case, this uh, statement is true. Yeah? It, 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 it's true in a trivial way, because the left-hand side is zero, and the right-hand side is the thing that it's predicted to be. Yeah? Uh, so this is G minus 1 plus uh, uh, degree D plus... Uh, Yes. So if degree D if degree D is greater than zero, is greater than two T minus one, uh, it's also true. Yeah, it's also true because uh, this this term here, this uh, uh, this this thing here is uh, K C minus D, and this has degree less than zero. Yeah, and so uh, and uh, so we know. So all of that stuff. The, the second statement here. If the de if if degree of d if the degree of d is greater than two g minus one, then l of d is one minus g plus degree d, and this guy is zero. Right. 
So, you know, these are the two cases where we achieve certainty depending only on the degree of D, without us needing to know who D is. Right? And so it remains to deal with degree D in this range, 0 to G minus, up to 2G minus 2. Right? And so in this range, it's, you know, there is definite uncertainty. We don't know what the, the degree of D itself does not specify the, the L of D. However, uh, there's a very, very easy trick now. So uh, any, any such D, all D in this range, can be put in a chain. Right? I can take D minus 1 less than D0, less than D1, less than... Less than less than D uh, to G minus 3, less than D to G minus 2, less than D to G minus 1. Yeah? And so each of these is... Uh, so, you know, for example, I mean, the, 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 I can do this completely... In a com this is a completely trivial argument. I'm not doing anything clever here. Uh, set D I to be equal to... Uh, the given D, this is the given guy, uh, uh, minus uh, D minus I P. Right, for any, ch choose a point P. Your choice. You're allowed to choose P a a anyhow, and I say, I do this. Right? And so in this chain here, as I'm going from one, 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 one of these devices to another, I can apply the, uh, the basic trick. So, so each step, at each step, uh, L of D I goes less than L of D I plus 1. And this is either, the difference here is either, either equals or goes by 1. Yeah, and so uh, I want to just apply the same chain here. I want to do k minus d two g minus one less than uh, k minus d two g minus two less than. So I'm just taking each of these. So in the middle here, I've got k minus d i, uh, and then k minus d i plus 1. I think I've got it the wrong way around. To up to k minus d minus 1. Yeah? And so at the bottom here, we have certainty. We have the L of d, L is 0. L of d minus 1 is 0. And here we have certainty, L of d uh, to g minus 1 is uh, g. Yes? So there are two g steps here. There are two g steps then, there. And I'm going, I'm going from... Uh, if, if, I, if I consider these numbers L of D, then it goes from 0 up to G. And so it, it must be the case that exactly G of the steps are step up by 1, and exactly a G of them stay where they are. So exactly G of the steps increase. And G stayed, and G remained, remained fixed. Right? And exactly the same thing applies here. So the same statement. Right? 
right? However, however, these two these two guys are complementary. So uh, the statement I was making here is at least one of these must be it must be equality, right? So in other words, it's not possible for both of them to jump up at the same time, right? And so you know, I take I take this step here from k minus di to k minus di minus 1. And I take this step here from, from di minus 1 to di. Yeah? And so the statement there is saying it never happens that this step goes up and this step goes up. Right? And so the ones where this one, the ones where this goes up, this one's not allowed to go up. On the other hand, they... Uh, this has got to go up exactly g times, and this one's also got to go up exactly g times. And therefore, this is not at least one of these. It's exactly one of them. Right? And so my d, my d is stuck somewhere in the middle here. d is one of these, one of these steps. Right? And I count, count down how many steps I went down. And that's, so, so the, the dimension, the L of D here, is uh, G minus the number of steps down, right? And uh, uh, L of K minus C is the number of steps I went up there, right? And that's the, uh, that's the statement here. Yeah? Okay, so let me, let, me, let me tell you how to prove A, B, and C. And C is tricky and... So, proof of A to C. And so I'm only, use, I'm only going to use one idea here. So let me take F in K of C, not, not constant. Right? Then, then uh, so then F is defining for me a rational map from C to A1, right? Just taking P into F of P, right? And, you know, this is, this is not necessarily a morphism because the F probably has poles, and at a pole, this is not, the F of P is not defined, right? So I take the same thing and I regard it as a rational map from C into P1, yeah? And now it's better, right? So, uh, sorry, uh, still a rational map. So this rational map extends, extends as a morphism. So why? So uh, the, 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 the statement is that this, this ratio f to 1 is the same as the ratio 1 to f to the minus 1. Right? So where, at the places where f has a pole, then f to the minus 1 is regular and has a 0. Right? And so, and so one of these two expressions so it extends as a morphism c to p1. Yeah, and so this is um, uh, one of the two expressions. Uh, f to one and one to f to the minus one. I mean, they're, the, they're the same. They're the same rational map to p one, but one of them one of them is regular at every point. Right? And that's the definition of a morphism. Right? So, uh, so this defines a field extension. K of C contains K of P1. Right? So this is just K of T. This is just the rational function field in one variable. The ordinary thing, and this is a field extension. So it's got this is a finite. It's the, they, they both have separable. The, the, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They both have transcendence degree one, 
And so this is a finite field extension. It has degree k of c to k of t. Right. Now, uh, I want to do an argument on f lower star oc. Now, I want to call this map phi. Right. So I want to argue on phi lower star oc. Yes? And, um, <coughs> and so uh, I did plan to say something about this being just affine coordinate rings. The, uh, uh, you know, there are rings associated with this curve C. The C is a cur projective curve, so it's got a homogeneous coordinate ring, and it's got affine coordinate rings on each affine piece. Right? And so you don't really need sheaf theory to do this. You can do this argument in an elementary way. But anyway, I say this thing here is uh, a sheaf of algebras over P1. And it's, and it's uh, locally free. Right, so here's P1. And here's some point, some point Q on P1. And here's a local parameter, ZQ. Right, now the point is that the local ring, this is a, the non-singular thing, the local ring here is a discrete valuation ring. And modules, finitely generated modules over a discrete valuation ring is something that we understand completely, right? And so it's possible there's some torsion, but that would, mean, that would be some, some functions there that are zero outside ZQ, right? So this thing here is, that this, the point about this locally free, it's very, very easy to be locally free over a discrete valuation ring, right? So because P1 is non-singular, Almost anything I write down is going to be locally free over it, right? And so locally free, I, I have in mind a kind of geometric picture doing like this, right? That the curve C is getting mapped to P1. But I don't want to use the geometry, I want to use the algebra, right? I want to say this algebra is locally free. And I, I can, I can, so, uh, you know, I don't need lo I don't need this. This I don't need the sheaves here. I could just take an affine, an appropriate affine coordinate ring of C over an affine piece of P1, if I want to, right? And then, uh, so there's this degree here, degree of this field extension, and that is also the degree, the scheme theoretic degree of the fiber over a point, right? So this is just a property of locally free, locally free modules. Right? I have a locally free module over a discrete valuation ring. So if I cut by the maximal ideal, I get a finite dimensional vector space. And the dimension of the vector space is the same as the rank of the algebra. So this is locally free of rank. The same thing, the same number here, degree. Yes? And so there are three numbers here I'm talking about. One is the degree of this field extension. The other one is the degree of this locally free, free sheaf of locally free algebras, locally free sheaf of algebras. And the other one is what happens if I cut at one point, if I, so I divide out by uh, the maximum ideal at this point. Right? And I get, the, I get three numbers here, and the numbers are the same. And the reason they're the same is because this is locally free. Locally free module, just locally, it means direct sum of, of modules. Yeah? So now, who are my dNs? So, 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 so to prove proof of A, uh, di uh, divisor of F is zeros of F minus poles of F. And uh, this is, uh, so the, uh, the pullback that, you know, t equals zero, and t, t equals zero minus t equals infinity. And I have to calculate the degree of this. I'm sorry, I don't have time to write it out. I'm just calculating the degree of 
the number of zeros is the degree of this map over zero, and the degree of the map is constant over the whole of P1. Right? So proof of, for B, who am I going to take to be Dn? I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take on P1, I'm going to take O P1 of N. Right? And then I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to take um, O, I'm going to take on, on C, just take uh, the pullback of uh, fi fire plus three, fire plus star, O P1 of N. Right? So as a divisor class, I'm just taking, uh, as, a, as a divisor class, I'm taking uh, uh, phi to the minus one of infinity, and I'm taking n times that. Right? And that, that, so L of, D, L of D is now, so L of this n, dn is something that we can calculate. Right? So he's the, uh, <coughs> so uh, this is, I'm, I'm taking the sheaf, this is h, h naught of the sheaf A of N on P1. Right? And so, uh, you know, I should have done, I should have spent some time talking about Riemann rock for P1, and this A is sort of basically a direct sum of line bundles, and so, so this is growing, grows like uh, uh, N times the degree minus a constant. Yeah, and so I have this, I have uh, these divisors here, they grow, the degree of the divisors dn is the degree of this thing here, which is the fiber over infinity times n, and that has got degree d, right? Whereas the h naught is growing n, n degree minus, minus constant. So this proves b, right? And c is much trickier, so c is, the divisor kc is you should think of it as the Grotendieck dualizing sheaf, the canonical class. And so I expect that most of you have been taught at some time in your life that the canonical class has something to do with differentials. So who is KC? So one answer, one answer is, uh, divisor of uh, one form, right? And this, this is going to give omega one of C, right? And so that's perfectly good. If you already know an argument for this, then you don't need to listen to lecture, right? And so, uh, and so, uh, you, you know, I mean, you can, this is what you're doing in, uh, if, you, if you've read Shafarevich or if you come from complex analysis and you think of, want to explain what the Riemann rock is. So incidentally, in complex analysis, in complex analysis, the degree of the divisor of f equals zero, and this statement, this key statement that L of Kc plus P equals L of Kc. Both come by, both come from contour integration. Right. So for the first one, I take uh, F primed over F. So this is a, F prime over F is a differential on the, on the, on the, in, on the, this is a global meromorphic differential on the whole of the Riemann surface, and uh, it has residues equal to uh, possibly a multiple of 2 pi i that I can't remember. Uh, the, the, the order of zeros or poles of F at each point, right? And so you integrate this thing around the contour that, uh, that has each of the points, and you get zero, right? So, so, so uh, you know, the differential, the, the, this is a good point of view, but it's not the point of view I want to use now. So I want to say that uh, instead I want to say omega c. <clears throat> so my answer 
It's omega C, so this is the Gerson deep dualizing sheet. Or a Sayer Gerson deep dualizing sheet. So uh, if you want, I'm uh, using a sledgehammer to, to crush a nut. Using a sledgehammer, using a big hammer to break a nut. So, so you know, what I really... So let me think of this C with this map to phi. Uh, phi to P1. Right? So, this, the dualizing sheaf is about, it's about, it's about Homs. Hom and, uh, so, and X. So X is just the derived function of Hom. And so, what I really want to do is uh, think about uh, so, I already used this field extension, K of C over K of T. Right? This is a finite field extension. Right? So, as you know, so, right? so this means that KC is a finite dimensional vector space. over K of T. Right? So it makes sense to take the dual of this vector space. So I'm going to do HOM of KC, KT, over KT. So there are two, uh, it, two sort of basically extraordinary things about this construction. So one is, this is a KC algebra. This is a KC module. Yes? So, uh, you know, what's strange about this? Well, this was a, I said this is a finite dimensional vector space, and here I'm taking the dual vector space. That's got nothing to do with multiplication by KC. So, if I have an element alpha there, if I have a homomorphism alpha from KC into KT, I define, and I've got some element, uh, you know, some element G in KC, right? I define alpha times G to be the homomorphism alpha, sorry, alpha times G applied to F is alpha applied to F times G. Yeah. So, in other words, I'm multiplying in here before applying the element alpha. And that makes this into a, a KC module. I, I wanted it to be a. I want it to be a. So it's a, in fact a one-dimensional vector space. So you know, one-dimensional vector space is a, a thing that you're pretty familiar with. Uh, I, I'm just expressing this in sort of weird language. And the second point is uh, it doesn't really depend on T. All right. So, for example, if I replace KT by a smaller field and this KT here by a smaller field, as long as it's still got transcendence degree one, then I, I get exactly the same module, exactly the same KC module. Right? That's because the, you know, here I have the freedom to map into K of T, but I have the restrictions that the thing is supposed to be KT linear. Right? So, you know, the things I'm talking about are the, are the, uh, are the uh, you know, the tricky parts of duality theory. Right, so omega C Omega C is uh, the, uh, the sheaf version of this. Right. So in other words, instead of taking, so I've got this map phi from C to P1. That's the thing I've been using all the, way, all the time over there. So it's this phi lower star OC is a sheaf of algebras over P1. <coughs> And so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take POM OP1 
of phi r star i c into omega of p1. Right? So omega of p1 is O of minus 2. Right? So, so exercise uh, this, uh, the whole of Riemann rock holds for p1. Right, if I've got line, if I've got vector, if I've got divisors on p1, we know their degree, we know the dimension of the vector space, it's just a vector space of polynomials. Right, we also know that there is a unique divisor in degree minus 2, which is uh, the wrong dimension. So, so degree of this O of minus 2 is minus 2, and H naught of him is unsurprisingly uh, zero, right? And this zero is strictly greater than one minus zero minus two, right? So the, the right-hand side of Riemann rock is one minus the genus plus the degree, right? So this guy here has gone down to minus two, right, which is 2g minus 2 in the case g equals 0. And this is still, all of, this, all of the statements I was making earlier about the canonical class are still true. So canonical class of, of, of p1 is this O of minus 2, right? Anyway, uh, uh, this guy here, I told you this guy is naturally, exactly this construction here, this is naturally sheaf of modules. over uh, Philo star OC, right? And so, you know, the thing, everything I'm doing here is a sheaf on P1, and I'm taking Holmes of sheaves over P1. So this thing here is naturally a P1 module, right? However, I'm saying I can also make it into a, a Philo star OC module by this same trick of pre-multiplying, right? I'm doing it in this HOM, I'm pre-multiplying. <coughs> Right. Anyway, when I take the, the sheaf corresponding to this, the sheaf corresponding to this is uh, omega c. Right. And uh, omega c is uh, OC of k, OC of k c. And there are some, uh, you know, there's a little calculation to to, to calculate that uh, uh, that g is in terms of in terms of degree of this phylo star OC, the degree and rank of, of this, right? And then you calculate that this KC has degree 2G minus 2 and it's not uh, L, of, L of KC. L of KC is G. Okay, so I'm um, sorry, this, the end is a little bit uh, unsatisf un unsatisfactory. I realise I should spend another two hours explaining all of this stuff. So, you know, the, uh, the, there are different points of view on this dualising, on this dualising sheaf. So you could go back to classical algebraic geometry and say it's just Kähler differentials, right? Or you can say it is something that exists, exists in the abstract sense. So uh, there are modern proofs of uh, dual dualising sheaf which don't give you any construction at all of this omega, just say it exists for categorical reasons. So it represents functor and so on and so forth. And so this, uh, the thing I'm doing here is, on the one hand, it's fairly concrete, because I'm talking about P1 and the dualising sheaf of P1, and then I'm talking about these sheaves of, uh, locally free sheaves of algebras over P1, which are just direct sums of line bundles. So everything here is... Uh, you know, between this highly abstract language. So I want to make just one little point here, that uh, uh, this, uh, if you're doing omega 1c, and if you've got this picture, you know how to calculate the genus of c in terms of the genus of p1, the degree of the cover, and how many ramification points there are. That's Horowitz's formula. However, everything I've said here makes perfectly good sense if the map is inseparable. So inseparable maps between curves are not specially important or specially 
are especially difficult to work with. However, uh, in that case, this ar ar arguing on the omega-1 just doesn't work at all. So it's just not true that Kähler differentials tell you anything at all about uh, inseparable maps. So whereas, the du whereas this dualizing sheaf stuff, I mean, it's slightly abstract, it's slightly up in the clouds, but uh, it's, uh, it works perfectly well, even for inseparable maps. OK, so I'm sorry I didn't quite f uh, finish what I wanted to do. I have a sort of half-written paper here, which I'm hoping to get somebody to write better. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>